So, I get a lot of questions about how the electric can does in cold weather, long drive, rough roads and so on and so on. So I thought I would take all of these myths about the electric car and put it to the test. Not just drive it for one day in the cold weather, but try to push this little Tesla to the extreme. So I decided to take my almost three year old Tesla, which does not have any of these fancy heat pumps or octo valve and has already been driven over 100,000 kilometers and has had no service check or maintenance done whatsoever and take it on a road trip through some of Europe's toughest roads. Norway's brutal but beautiful mountain coastline, with thousands of fjords, snowy mountain paths, the world's longest tunnels, some of the biggest fjords in the world, windy mountain roads and freezing temperatures. But I would not just take one big drive one day and stay at a nice hotel for a couple of days and enjoy the scenery. No, I wanted to push the car. So we plan to be on these extreme roads for 12 to 14 hours a day, not just one or two days, but five days straight in freezing temperatures. And the destination we were trying to get to in the middle of the winter was North Cape, the most northern place in Europe. This is even further north than the Fairbanks of Alaska. It's a thousand kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, only about 2000 kilometers from the North Pole, in the middle of the winter when the sun doesn't even care to get up in North Cape. And we're not just driving up there straight through Sweden and taking the easy way up because that would have been too short of a trip and I wanted to be on the road pushing the car for at least 5 days to wait between 12 to 14 hours a day on rough roads. So I brought along my brother-in-law so we could take turns in driving so we could actually be able to drive this many hours for these many days and in doing so pushing the car as much as humanly possible because we were not able to drive much more than this even though we took turns on driving so this is why it is as much as humanly possible but then we could see how the Tesla would react to this kind of abuse could it handle this extreme road trip that I would never recommend anyone doing in only five days then I would say this electric car can handle any road trip you would ever plan on doing I will also be sleeping in the car using camp mode to see how it handles the cold weather so the car won't even get a rest when we do. And at the same time we will of course see how the charging infrastructure is holding up in the EV capital of the world, Norway. And see how well the car will charge doing this abuse of the car in freezing temperatures and how many mileage we can get out of the battery. But this trip got even more extreme than we had planned. Let's get this road trip on the road. But first things first, we needed to get to Norway and we didn't want that to be a part of the extreme road trip. So we wanted to drive less than a couple of hours to the north tip of Denmark, take the ferry over to Kristiansand in Norway, drive one and a half hour down to the south tip of Norway and that would be where we would start our road trip get to bed early so we can get a good night's sleep and be ready for the next five hard days of driving. But our plans quickly went sideways as we came to Heert's health at 11 a.m. but the ferry didn't sail because of bad weather. So that was kind of a big problem since we had everything planned and hotels booked. My brother-in-law could not just take any more holidays than he had already planned so we had to get to Norway somehow. So we checked if the ferry from Frelishaun was still going and luckily it was and it was about three hours from now so that should give us plenty of time to get over there but the ferry was of course not going to Norway. It was going to Jutebor in Sweden. Which meant we had to drive all the way up over Oslo and inland to Norway if we were even allowed because there was just one last barrier that could stop this trip right now and that was COVID. We had just taken a test before we left home that was negative, but to get into Norway we had to take a test as we crossed the border as well and had to sit there and wait for the answer before we were allowed to drive into the country. But luckily we got a negative test and could go. 
but time was starting to run out, so we would not be able to get all the way down to the south tip of Norway, so we had to drop that idea and just get a bit inland from Oslo and start our journey there. But that all meant that we did not get our little easy start to this journey. We already started our extreme road trip from Aarhus, Denmark at 9.30 am and 15 hours later we arrived at a little town called Bø, half past midnight, where we could crash for the night. So you know you were in Norway when we pulled up to this Tesla charger, but of course there's not just Tesla chargers here in Norway. We also have Mir over here, a lot of big powerful chargers. And look over here, i never seen one in real life before, <laughs> a Neo swap station. And of course two Neo uh, normal chargers as well. But that's the first new swap station I have ever seen. And I only think they are here in Norway in Europe. So probably one of the only one here in Europe as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a charging station, not just one charger, but many companies and many charging ports. The way it should be. So this extreme journey had already started and we were already in freezing temperatures about minus 6 degrees and had been pushing the car all day and already been driving close to 700 kilometers. Luckily, we did find a hotel with a charger that we could just hook it up to and go to sleep and the car would be fully charged and ready to go the next day. So not the best start to our journey, but hey, this was not a holiday. The whole point was to push the car. So this just meant that we would get even more hours and more kilometers on the road in freezing temperatures than we expected. So that's all good. Except that we were already a bit tired after only one day, but the next day should prove to be an absolutely amazing day that would make us wide awake. So we got up early the next day so we could get ready to go around 6 a.m. because we had a long day ahead of us. Because we were not just going to drive the fastest way up to North Cape, that would have been going into Sweden, driving away from the mountains, over to the East Coast, taking the highway up through Sweden, driving through Finland and straight up to North Cape. But that would only have taken two to three days and not been much of a challenge. I wanted to push this electric car for at least five days straight on rough roads. So that meant going through this. Yeah, no straight lines here. Nothing but thousands of mountain tops and fjords. And today we were trying to get to the biggest fjord of them all, Sonefjord. For starters, this is not only the biggest fjord in the country, but also the world's second largest fjord. It goes on for 200 kilometers, dotted with small villages. Its inner is curved by the biggest glacier in continental Europe. And while Sonefjord is a marvel to behold on its own, the King of Fjords also have two beautiful arms, Nerefjord and Arlandsfjord. And Arlandsfjord was the destination we would try to get to today. So we jumped into the tester with a full charge and got back on the road. In the beginning we only had the moon to light up the road for us. But soon the sun came up and revealed the sheer beauty of this country we were driving in. So we started to drive in this beautiful scenery with small mountains and lakes, but the mountains just became bigger and bigger and bigger as we passed south of the big national park, Hardangavida, Norway's biggest national park. And then we had to pass over the mountains to get over to the first big fjord. And here it got really cold and in some areas we were not allowed to drive on our own. So we had to follow this little convoy over the mountain tops. But with the heavy winds blowing snow all over the place, we did understand why, as visibility could quickly go down to zero, but felt very safe in this convoy. So that was just a very cool experience driving the Tesla through this blue brutal but beautiful area. And 
And as we were waiting for the convoy to take off inside a tunnel, it did give me a great example of how nice it will be when everyone is driving in an electric car. Because the air inside the tunnel did become pretty thick very quickly, with all these cars and trucks in there with their engines running to keep warm. Meanwhile, we were sitting in our Tesla, not emitting anything, and the Tesla was still keeping us nice and warm. But we did get down from the mountains and down into these beautiful canyons leading up to one of Hardanger Fjord's long arms, with some very cool waterfalls on the way. came to Hardanger Fjord and this breathtaking place was an absolute pleasure to drive through. We did go a bit up a mountain at the end of the fjord to take a little walk and enjoy and take in this majestic scenery Norway has to offer. And of course get a bit of motion back into our bodies after sitting for many, many hours for two days now. But we had to push onwards because we were far from done for the day. And then we had to cross this big fjord and in best Norwegian style that happened by going out of a tunnel, straight onto a bridge, straight into another tunnel. Yeah, Norway has a lot of tunnels, but I will get back to that in next episode. But as the sun went down, we pushed through the mountains in the dark in freezing temperatures and finally arriving at Arlandasvangen, with the famous lookout of Stigastin. But even though the sun had already gone down, we still took the windy mountain roads up the mountains to the viewpoint, hoping we could get some nice night pictures of the place and the views. And of course, we had the whole place to ourselves. So we could also take some pictures of the Tesla and the famous little lookout. Pretty sure that might be the only picture of a Tesla right in front of this bridge that exists. But we had some fun taking the pictures, enjoying the scary overlook over the city down below, lighting up up the mountains. We even got this nice picture of the car with the beautiful stars in the skies, even with a shooting star. And that should bring good luck, right? But as perfect as this day had been, well, things was about to turn around. And this extreme road trip was about to get more extreme than we had hoped for. So join me for the next episode of this extreme road trip through Norway, when things start to go sideways, literally. And we also talk a bit more about how the car is handling all of this abuse and see how the charging infrastructure is holding up. So until next time, take care out there and be nice. Thank you.